Do binders help or inhibit the smoke ring? Let's find out. Testing barbecue assumptions is one of my favorite things to do here on the Grill Top Experience channel. Now, just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that you should or even that it works. And so we put it to the test to find out if binders are worth your time. And here's how we set it up. I started out with two chuck rows, but wanted to test four binders, so I cut them into one and a half pound chunks. Now I dry brined them by putting on a teaspoon of kosher salt before putting it in the refrigerator for about 12 hours. And this will intensify the beef flavor and I try to do it anytime I can. And when they came out of the fridge, they were a deep red color after the salt and thyme worked their magic. I covered each one with a different binder and started with classic yellow mustard. Another one I covered in olive oil, which is also pretty common. And a third that I used cranberry peach juice on. Then I used a healthy amount of black pepper with no other seasonings. And the idea of a binder is to make those seasonings stick to the meat. Now, of course, I did one control roast with no other binder and only added black pepper. I set up the grill for low and slow at 250 degrees Fahrenheit and marked each roast with a toothpick so I could remember which one was which. Now the only thing I did to them is I spritzed them with water once an hour and left them alone the rest of the time. So here's the mustard coated roast before I wrapped it. Yum, it's yellow. Next is the olive oil roast. And third, the cranberry peach juice roast. Now here is the no binder roast and check out that beautiful mahogany color. You can really tell the difference when they're all put together side by side. I wrapped the roast in pink butcher paper so I wouldn't soften the bark and then I marked them with the toothpicks so I could keep them straight. I put them back on the grill until they reached an internal temperature of 190 degrees Fahrenheit and I normally I'd let them go longer but I wanted to slice them so you could see the smoke ring. And they came out looking incredible so I cut each one in half so we could see what was inside. Check out the smoke ring on the three different binders. So I was pretty surprised at the results. The salt and pepper steak had the best color overall, but the mustard and the olive oil ones weren't too far behind and still had a great smoke ring. One of the big surprises for me was that the cranberry peach juice had a big impact on the color and the smoke ring of the final product. They weren't nearly as dark as the other ones. So now the next question is, which one had the best bark? The steak that was coated in oil had a similar crust to the one that only had salt and pepper. Both of them were pretty crusty, which is just the way that I like it. Now the one that was coated in mustard, it took a lot longer for that crust to form because the mustard had to dry out before it could happen, and that resulted in a much softer crust. Now a smoke ring is nice, but in the end, it has to taste like smoke. Now some people had said that the oil would enhance the bark, and other people said that that oil coating would inhibit the smoke absorption in the meat. I thought those two things were mutually exclusive, but it turns out they were both about right. Out of the four that we tested, the one that was coated in oil had the least amount of smoke flavor. And with most things in barbecue, it often comes down to preference. Now, I don't think that binders are really necessary to keep your rub on the meat, and they certainly don't enhance the smoke ring or the smoke absorption. Now, Hobo Nickel Barbecue, he's another YouTuber, and he did a similar test with pork butts, and he got very similar results. You might want to check his out too. So what do you think? Binders or no binders? Let me know down in the comments below.